God's number one priority. God has a number one priority. This is the only thing on his mind. So do not forget this message. This is important because you came out tonight. It's important because God wants to talk to you personally. He wants to get intimate with you tonight, okay? So this is a very intimate message. Tonight, God's number one priority of the, his kingdom is his children. But it's not exactly what you're hearing, but you're going to see it deeper. Now, tonight, yeah, just start on the floor. <laughs> this has been my most empowering message I've ever studied. As God has given me an opportunity. So I thank God. Was it again, Ron? I thank God. We just sing, I thank God. That <laughs> I'm allowed to um, be here to deliver it. Kind of like a woman in childbearing. You know, you've got to wait your whole life. Today I feel like I'm birthing my baby. Okay? So, now we've been really learning. We've been studying on, the, you know, God's number one priority. And it's only one thing, and it's the kingdom of God. He wants us to know about that kingdom. And he really, 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 truly, truly wants us to understand something about it. So Brother Ron's going to read Matthew 5, 3. We're going to jump right into the message. Let's see if I can get this. Go ahead, Brother Ron, and go ahead and start reading that. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's it. So blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs. for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So what does that mean? Here's God, he's stating a major factor to those who are spiritually poor in their spirituality. They're poor in their spirit. Now this is verses to remind those who are not maybe self-confident about this kingdom of heaven when they got saved. And they're maybe not really confident about everything when they started going to church, but they don't understand who's living inside of them. So I'm just saying, like, is there anybody here tonight that you would even like to admit yourself that you need some spiritual help because you want to grow closer to God? Like, you know you can't make it on your own. Is anybody here like that? Okay, because I know that's how I felt my whole life. <laughs> So tonight, be ready to see that God wants to place a value on you because he put you here um, on earth. Now, being here tonight is how you can actually relieve your spiritual bankruptcy because you're bankrupt because you're like thinking, man, I was so connected to God and I'm not feeling so connected lately or I'm not seeing God working in my life. And that's because tonight, God wants us to see that we're here to pursue his kingdom. Amen? Well, Solomon, he talks about something when he ends his book in the Bible, saying there's only one thing that man is supposed to be consumed with. Have you ever had something consume you so hardcore that it overtakes you? Well, this is what King Solomon said when he wrote... His part in the Bible. Go ahead, Pastor. Read Ecclesiastes. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. So he's telling us, no matter what you do, fear God, keep his commandments. And that is to love God and to keep his law. You're supposed to keep it on your mouth, keep it on your lips, keep it in your heart, keep it in your mind. So all of the priorities that we are naturally involved in every day should not be things or people. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 12, 13. Now, what does that mean? Well, it goes back to just a little revise. Last week we talked about it should be seeking the kingdom of heaven and his what? Righteousness. righteousness. What does righteousness mean? It means you're in the right position with God every day of your life. You're just constantly putting God first. You pray first. You think about him first. What would he say? How is he going to talk? How is he going to act? What's he going to say about the situation? Then God says he will prove himself right because that's who he is. He pr Proving himself right is that his kingdom is all that truly matters and we should be able to apply the kingdom of heaven to every day of our lives while we're still placed here on earth. So what does that mean? Don't worry. He said about what? Clothes. What else? Don't worry about things. Don't worry about cars. Don't worry about money, etc. That has nothing to do with the purpose for you.
for your life. You're going to find out more about that next week, but I'm just getting started on that. So just surviving every day, trying to figure out how you're going to pay your bills, how you're going to find your soulmate, or how you're going to work, and how you're going to live. He says, that's not the purpose I created for you. That's not your purpose. It's so much more. So much more. That's why we always want to keep our connection always first with God. Now, why is that important? Well, we just talked about a friend of mine. He just passed away today. He was our old pastor, Pastor Gary Weaver. And we pray for Jackie Weaver and his family. And Pastor Weaver used to watch me sometimes live on Facebook because we were friends. He was a good pastor and he was a good preacher. But you know what? People keep dying around us, don't they? Do people you know have died daily more than ever lately? Well, God doesn't want you to think that you're going to follow after them. And that's what people are doing. They're working so hard. But this is the question God wants it. For what? What are you doing? Has it got anything to do with building your relationship with God for things you're working so hard for? Is it working really hard that you're working for things with the kingdom of God? Is that what it is? So here's my point. The greatest legacy. Who would like to leave a legacy for your family? Your children's children. Okay, your greatest legacy is your to live is something more important than your house. Instead, it's living a life that drew people to the kingdom of God. People see you and they say, man, something about that woman. Something about that guy. There's something different about them. That drew me into church and now I'm going to church because of their lifestyle, what they said to me, how they talked to me, how they treated me, and how they didn't judge me. Maybe. Because in the end, this is I'm going to ask you a very personal question because it's not from me. This is from the Lord. When you stand before God and your life flashes, he says you're going to have a review for your life flashing before your eyes and you, you died and you went on. What is your life going to show? Are you, is it going to show you arguing with your spouse? Arguing with people? Is it going to show, or is it going to show you loving your neighbors as yourself? I'm just saying, what is your life going to show? Does anybody want to share? What do you think your life's going to show when you get into heaven and you see your life before your eyes? Something good. What do you, th what do you think it's going to show? Playing for the band? Playing for the band. There you go. I got you one. <laughs> What is your life going to show for? Loving my family, my grandparents and my mom and dad. Yeah, you love them. So that's, God is love. So good thing you love them and honor them, it sounds like. So you're going to see honoring your family in your part of your video. That's good. That's good, Laura. Anybody else? I don't think God shows me the art of giving. Good. Of Being a giver. That is so good. And that is so true. That's good. Go ahead. You had your hand up? I thought you, oh, you did. I'm sorry. I seen a hand over there. <clears throat> I just remember for like five years, I uh, weekly went somewhere. Uh, had trauma centers, uh, disabled places, and people that couldn't communicate because they were so sick. Yeah. And visited them. And That's good. Saying to them. That's good. Try to give them some sort of cheer and hope in a day that they had they couldn't express themselves. That's really good, Pastor. I love that. Anybody else? That's wonderful. Help little kitty cats. <laughs> Anybody else? What is your life? You're standing for the Lord. What is your life? Tell me something good. What do you think? Just taking care of my kids for a long time by myself, being strong. Amen. Not giving up. Not giving up. Praise God. Thank God. I would say the hard experiences that create the most valuable lessons. Yeah, that's so good. I love that. That is so good. Anybody else? Working at the Crisis Pregnancy Center trying to 
help save the unborn baby. Yeah, that's a huge blessing that you get to see one day. It's going to flash. It's going to happen. You can't get away from this. We're just, God wants to talk about it, that's all. Anybody else? Huh? Given, given your first fruits like you're supposed to. Yeah, so being a good tiger to keep the word of God going. That's going to, that's, you're going to get blessed, you know, for that. You're going to get rewarded for that too because you're keeping the word ex in existence here even. Or wherever you go to church. The day you were saved. Huh? The day you were saved. The day you were saved. You gave your life to Jesus. You're going to see that. Yeah, that's so true. <clears throat> Anybody else like to share? Okay, well then, I'm just going to have Renee, I'm going to show you that um, those are some thoughts, right? That you should start thinking about because your life is still not a vapor right now, like you're still here. Because life is like a vapor, meaning that's why I say that. And we want to make sure that what we're doing is in right standing with God because you, we give an account to that day for every idle word we've even spoken. So why not start to think about these things while we're here on earth as we're good stewards of our money, good stewards of our time, good stewards of spending our time doing stuff for others and sharing and then telling people our testimony of what you've been through, where God's brought you through. And that's, that's good stuff. So there's only two things to seek, though, that is found in Matthew 6, 33. Renee's going to read that again. So you never forget when you're thinking about what I asked, these are the things to think about. Two things she's going to say. Hey, Billy. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Awesome. So what's the first thing she said? Seek first what? The kingdom of God. Okay, and what's the second one? You guys are so good today. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you a question. You ready? What is our number one priority in life then? Kingdom first. Yes. So say it loud. The kingdom is first. Tell your neighbor, kingdom first. Say it again. Kingdom first. Say the kingdom. That's right. Now hit him on the shoulder lightly and say, the kingdom is first. The kingdom is first. Now turn around and tell your neighbor behind you, the kingdom is first. What's first? What's the first thing in your life? From this day forward, what is going to be the first thing in your life? Good job. See, Christ says, if you get what you just said to your neighbor and said it to yourself, you said it out in the universe, he says, I'm going to add everything unto you. Don't you want that? Good. Awesome. Now, last week, uh, Renee had this verse. It was found in Proverbs 10, 22. It says, all the blessings of God make it rich. And it adds no sorrow to your life. Now, doesn't that sound more like a kingdom life that you want now? That you want to be rich and you don't want no more added sorrow? Who wants that? Okay, so don't forget that verse because this is going to be for you. And if you guys are watching, this is for you too. All right, cool. Now I'm about ready to shift gears. Okay, I'm going to tell you how to get it. Yes, Lord, we're ready. You guys ready? All right. Now, God knows how serious you are because God knows everything. Right? He knows if you're saying, yes, I'm ready. I love you, Lord. But he knows if you're thinking about food or you're worrying about your next paycheck. So don't think about those things. We're hungering tonight. We're learning from God. And we're going to come to God as one, there's two words. Write it down. Okay? Please, or text it to yourself. I'm coming to God, say, as a desperate child. If you want no sorrow and you want to live richly, you want to say, I'm coming to God as a desperate child. Well, what is that desperate child like? That's like your feelings um, that you, a desperate child, like you don't have any hope left. Or... You're ready to do anything to change the bad situation.
that maybe you've been in or you don't want to be in and you want to secure what God has for you. So now we're going to shift our hearts to that number one priority of God in his kingdom. Guess what they are again? What is it? His what? Children. His children. So the first thing we're going to be focusing on is to teach, like if you have children or you're going to have children, the first thing that God's going to show you right now, we're going to read it together in Luke chapter 18, is he wants you to teach your children about the kingdom of God. And also, he wants all of us to approach him from day, this day forward. Okay? Now, I wish you guys could just write this down. Just please write it down. You approach him with childlike faith. That's what we're going to talk about. Childlike faith, Natalie. So let's take a look at Luke chapter 18, verses 15 through 17. All right? Here's Jesus. He's blessing little children. And it says, read it out loud with me, please. If you have. You guys ready? Okay. We're, it's Luke chapter 18, verses 15 through 17. You're welcome. Let's see what it says. Read it with me. And they brought unto him also infants, that he would touch them. But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. So write a little note right there in your Bible, so you know what rebuke means from now. If you want to rebuke something, that means stop. That means you stop something. When you say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, you're stopping those words to even flow over you. That's what it means. Okay? Let's read 16. Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall what? Not receive the kingdom of God. What does it say? As a little child, this is the most important thing you should underline, shall in no wise enter therein. This is a life-changing message. Let the little children, he says, come unto me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Now this kingdom that Jesus was talking about, it was his kingdom, it was for those who weren't religious yet. That's what it's for. He was saying, you know what? Do you guys see the children up there? These children right now are in the natural inhabitation of the kingdom. They're naturally inhabitants. That means they're automatically permanent citizens of heaven. Do you know that all children, before they come to an age of accountability, they naturally go to heaven? You know that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's showing children in their humble state. It means you can't come to the kingdom of heaven. If you don't come and enter this way as a child, because he's saying the humble states means that they can only enter way more easily as a child instead of old, cranky, grouchy, prideful adults. <laughs> Just saying. Who are you talking to? I don't know. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Most adults in the world today, they're all messed up with religion. They speak the stupidest things out their mouth. I can't even, it's a shame to even repeat it. But here's Jesus. Man, I wish you guys would get the message he said. Nobody wants to get my message he said. My message is I want to work so hard to teach everybody in my word about this kingdom. That was his only message. Not a religious message. Not man's tradition message. Not you got to do all these things. No. Not the children, though. They are like a fresh piece of paper. They're like an open book. A child. They're ready to receive the truth about the kingdom. They'll believe it. Mm, just like that. They'll accept my words, he said. Just like that. They walk in it. Just like that. They don't have to unlearn anything. Adults, 
always struggling because they don't really want to see what God's word says. And he says they always want to argue about my word. All kids need to learn to just come to church. You should teach them to worship God first. Sing from day one. Because I remember seeing my own children and my old pastor's children that didn't even believe in dance. And guess what was they were doing when the jukebox was on? And they don't believe in it even. They got that. They were dancing. They were. I'm like, the kids are one year old and he was dancing, right? Naturally designed to dance for the Lord. See? So the kingdom of God, he says, it belongs to children because you don't have to go and unlearn a bunch of junk and trash that you've been taught by religious teachers. Now, children, they get it like this fast. And Matthew, when we read, I'm sorry, when we read Luke 18, 17, it said, Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child. So you are not allowed, you can't even receive the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, if you don't come as a child first. Hmm. Doesn't that explain a lot? He said, uh, you know, I got a huge problem with you people. Because anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God as a child, he said, y'all ain't going to even enter it. Can't even get in there. To me, this is amazing. Because Jesus is saying, anyone who's a church going, they can quote the whole Bible. They're a scholar. They're tongue talking. They can good tithe giving. They're a good prayer meeting attender. Anyone? He said, do you see what I'm saying? He said, whosoever is what anyone knows. Okay? Whosoever is anyone. So this could be anyone who's been going to church. I had a lot of people say to me, you know, my whole family went to church my whole life. But they don't go, but they think they're going to heaven because their whole family went to church. They grew up in church. They went to every session. And they've been going to church their whole life. He said, but if you didn't accept what you did as a little child. Interesting, isn't it, Leah? He said, so you don't even enter the kingdom because you've been going to church for a long time. You ain't even started to begin to see what this kingdom is like. All entrances into this kingdom of God all have to do with you tonight. And if you're watching, to become a child with childlike faith, okay, which means something. You know what that means? If you're taking notes, that means you, a childlike faith, which is called an attitude. An attitude. Attitude? So what's an attitude? An attitude means, with a childlike faith, means that you have a settled way of thinking or feeling about something. You're settled. Okay? That's what an attitude means. Okay? You're not, it's not about longevity. Like how long you've been going to church and how many things you've done or how many times you've played in the band or you've quoted scripture. No. Jesus is saying that all his children that he says receive the kingdom of God, this is how they come. They come to me like this. They have no expectation. They have no expectation. Oh, that I have to have power, or I have to be a good worker, and I got to have money, or I've got to have a reputation is required. No, they just walk in, and God says, Welcome to these children. Do you guys see my slides? I want you to look at the children on their faces. What do those children look like they're doing? Are they listening? What do they look like they're doing? Enjoying life. Happy. Happy, enjoying life. What else are they doing? Smiling. Smiling. Getting loved. Getting loved. Excited. Excited. <laughs> What's their face say to you? Adoration. Yes, they're in adoration. They're talking, right? They're probably talking to Jesus, right? What else? Okay, inspiration. Huh? Inspiration. Yes, they're inspired. Inspiration. What else are they doing? Eager. Eager. Let's take another look. Oh, look. Jesus said, don't be afraid of this little butterfly even. Because you have authority to control the earth even. Do you notice this child is just like, wow. This is going to be fun. I get to touch a butterfly. Look at these kids. 
What do they look like they're doing with Jesus? Huh? Learning. They're learning. Loving. Loving. They're listening. They're listening. They want to hear, don't they? And they're like saying, wow, wow. Jesus, I just want to hug you. Aw, look at that little baby's eyes. So please write down the word enter. Enter. Don't you want to be like that? Who wants to sit on his lap tonight? Well, you have to wait until I'm done. <laughs> now, the word enter does not mean to go into, okay? That's not what it means. The word enter, when we read this, to enter the kingdom, because we're going to enter tonight, the Greek word has to do with experience. Who wants to experience the kingdom? Amen. Amen. So, like, um, imagine, let's see. Let's see. Okay, think for a minute. What type of experience that makes you feel like, wow, I got to experience that. I never thought I could experience. Like, for instance, me, I got to experience childbirth, and it was not a fun experience, but I got to experience it. How many people have had something you can say you, you were involved in an experience? Do you know what I'm talking about? Anybody want to share? I'm not clear what you're asking. Like, um, I got to experience uh, reunited with a loved one that I haven't talked to in a long time, and that experience, wow, it was a great experience for me. Traveling, I got to travel to Arizona and seeing all those mountains and I haven't get to see and I've seen a lot of stuff in those mountains, but it was a great experience. You see what I'm saying? You get to experience a very exotic food, right? What's an experience to you? Uh, got to jump out of the plane. Wow, that's a great experience. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Went to the beach. You went to the beach. <laughs> I love it. Anybody else? She gets the experience to take a nap because she's tired. Makes her feel better when she wakes up. Because I know when I get to sleep in, I feel so good when I go into that deep sleep, right? Anybody else? The top of the mountain. Top of the mountain. He got to go to the top of the mountain. I think I met Jesus halfway. He thinks he met Jesus halfway. Isn't that good? Well, let me give you an idea about something because I know it's kind of hard to explain. Like, let me show you something. When you enter an experience... Like, you can go to the pool. I mean, people went, walked, opened the gate, walked into the pool area outside of summertime, but you never experience the water until you get in it. You would never get to experience the mountain if you didn't go there. What else are you going to say? So, this is what God is trying to show us tonight. He's saying, look, it doesn't matter how long you've been going to church or how many things that you think you know. It doesn't matter what you're doing. What matters is that you, yourself, accept my kingdom as a child. That's, he says, when you can walk not just into the pool area. Because if you don't want to get into the kingdom, what he's trying to say to enter in like you walk into the pool area and you never got wet because you didn't get in the water. Well, God wants us to all to walk into the kingdom and to receive what his fullness is tonight. So what does it mean to enter? It doesn't mean that you're going somewhere to enter tonight is for you to see that it means to experience something. Who wants that experience? I do. Are you ready for the experience though? Because I'm going to take you on a trip. You ready for a trip? Yes. Okay, this is my last message, maybe. You know, oh. <laughs> She's like, don't be trying to get me to be here till 100. Okay, let me explain. The children, they come, they accept God naturally. They come in, they see Jesus. Whoa, it's Jesus. They accept Jesus in return. They receive and they enter in the full experience of this Bible, the kingdom of God. Now, let me show you what I've been trying to say the whole life since I was... How many people have heard me say this, that I'm only five years old? Tim, you heard me say that? Dawn? Okay, now I'm going to share it with you. First, Romans 8.32. Who has that one? Wherefore, because they sought it, not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, 
for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. That's Romans 8.32? Let me just make sure I don't go to the right verse. One second. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sitting here going. Okay, here we go. Okay, watch this. Let's try this again. <laughs> he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Awesome. Thank you, sweetheart. So here, what this verse is talking about, we get... God that spared not his own son, right? That we get to even experience the same things that he's done for him. He's going to do it for us. So you having Jesus more inside of you allows you to call God your Abba Father. And he says, when you call him your Abba Father, he calls you his sons. And remember when he says the word sons is because he doesn't say daughters and um, children, like different names. It's because in heaven it's just we're spirits. We're not husband, wives, and all that. So what's going to happen is it brings everybody to his benefits of the kingdom because we're going to enter in right now to an experience because we're going to believe him as he's our own father and we're his own child. So I'm gonna, I'm, I want you to take a picture of this. Take a picture of this really quick, please, because you're going to want to go back and maybe see this later. Can you guys see it okay? Okay, cool. It works. This is a checklist. And please never forget, this is what he's telling us tonight, what we are supposed to do to believe and think as a child of God. Okay? Number one, number one, we're supposed to have a spirit of dependency. A spirit of dependency. Children are 100% completely dependent on the parent. Did you know that? He said, do not become independent. And that's why we have a lot of trouble on earth right now. And you don't get to experience the kingdom of God because that's trouble. You always want to be independent. But if you want to experience the kingdom of God, the greatest threat to a kingdom is independence. I got this, God. I don't worry about it. You talk trash. But the only thing God says about his children are to be known for is their dependency, dependency on their parents. Even in the womb, a child in their mother's womb, they depend on you to feed yourself. If you don't feed yourself, they don't get to eat. Did you know that? That's how they eat. Then after they come out, you literally, at least my son, Luke, you have to catch them. Luke went flying out. He was stuck. I, you have to catch your children. And then because they can't, feed them, they can't feed themselves, they can't clothe themselves, can they? Can they clean themselves, especially all them poopy butts? At least Sarah, she had a lot of poopy butts. <laughs> they can't even think for themselves, can they? Can they? So you have to do everything as a parent, right? Is that true? And God's saying, hey, be that way with me. Be with me that same way in this kingdom that I'm taking to a new experience. Don't worry about clothing yourself. Don't worry about you're going to eat. Why, God? Sorry. Of course, pray that it stays on. Why do you want me to turn right, God? And why do you want me to turn right right now? God, like, wait a minute. Why are you questioning me? I just told you to turn right. Why are you always fighting with me about the directions that I'm giving you? Ask for it. But you can't even listen, he says. See, in the kingdom, he doesn't ever want to hear you argue with him. Why, God? Why are you taking so long, God? He hates murmur about my toothpaste. And I got my crackers. And he's like, forget about that stuff. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Give, and it's going to be given to you, right? Don't keep trying to figure out how and how you're supposed to give, he says. He even says... Love your enemies. Love your enemies. Love your enemies. Love your enemies. How many times do you see him say, love your enemies, love your neighbors? How many times? Don't choose the ones that you want to love, he said. Just out there? Never. True? Am I right? And God said, if you don't forgive and love your enemies, he said, you're going to keep going through this stuff on earth for 40 years in the wilderness. 
See, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Don't worry about what they did or didn't do to you. You just do what I say. That's a child. Number three is a child. You have a spirit of trust. Like a job. How many times have you seen your kids do that? Do you sit there and see them say, oh, I'm scared, I'm not going to tell it all of my fault. Do they do that? No. I'll never forget when my first son, Luke, was a little boy. We went swimming. I'd say, jump. And he didn't even think about it. He ran back with those little legs. He just jumped. And he kept wanting to do it. I was getting tired. But he listened. Wow. Trust. Like a little child. It's going to be a good day at work for you. God's saying this to you right now. You're going to get some rest. <laughs> How oh God, how's oh, it going to be a good day? What do you mean by that? What are you talking about? I had a bad day today. I had a bad week. How's it going to be a good day tomorrow, God? And define it for me, God. And God said, look, it's going to be a great day. But I've noticed all my life, you know, God, he's always reminded me of his word and reminds me of things that when they're not going right for me and they're not going really good for me, guess what? That's why he said you got to seek him first. Speak his word. But you see, we... <laughs> right, honey? <laughs> He's over here going, amen. <laughs> because, did you guys didn't know? I'm oh, five. Now, I could be 55. I could be 40. I can meet you anywhere you want me. I can be any age. But my spirit's five. That's why when you call me and pray, it's going to happen, right? Because children, they trust you. Maybe you do it today, but not these little when they're little. When they're little. And my kids used to always say to me, hey, mom, you know what? You can just go to the bank. They got money. <laughs> they always said that to me. I always believed it, too. Because they see me get money from the teller, and they're like, when they'd say, Mom, can we go to Chuck E. Cheese? I'd say, Honey, I don't have any money until Friday. Well, you can just go to the bank. They'll give you money. That's spoiled. So in other words, God's saying, Would you do that for me this week? Would you do that for me this week? God's saying, Would you trust me? I'm telling you, sweet friends, all children have a mind like Jesus Christ. They have an innocent mind. Number four, the spirit of obedience. Guess what? Now, is that true or false? At least my kids always did. Number five, ch kingdom children have a spirit of acceptance. They naturally have a spirit of acceptance. They know that when you tell them, like God says, if you do this, I will do this, they accept it. Because I teach children. And they all learn their memory verses. And they all, what do they get? What do they get? That's what I was going to say. What do kids get from you as a grandma or a child or somebody you babysit? What do they get when you say, if you do this, I'll do that? I want you to go right now and get them some food. Get them some food to eat. Now watch you guys. Watch you guys. Watch you guys right now. Listen to yourself. Gian, Peter, James. Hmm, let's see. They started adding up the things that they had because Andrew had said, hey, uh, this boy over here has got some five loaves and he's got two fishes. So here's these disciples. Well, we've got to take this five loaves to do. And what happens? He blessed the bread, but what happened is we keep calculating what we want to do, and we don't want to accept what God asked of us to do. That's why when you give and you watch God's blessing, when that's when he does bring things from heaven. Because he's like, you trust him. Now, he blessed that bread and fish, and he told them even to go in the weeds and pick up the crumbs. Because God don't waste stuff. Isn't that interesting? He don't like to waste nothing. A child's going to remember what you promise. <laughs> I know uh, Caden calls me all the time and he'll say, Hey, Mamaw, mm -hmm. 
what you got for me because I'm coming to stay the night and I know what you said, what you're going to do. He's got it all figured out already because I promise when you come, you'll get some prizes. So he keeps me on my toes, right? And God's saying, be like a child. Okay, how about if it doesn't happen today? Tomorrow you wake up and you're going to say, I expect it's going to happen today then because I'm going to wait until it happens. Quit speaking death over the situation. It ain't happening yet, right, Michelle? No, it happened. I told you it's coming. See, because you're speaking life. That's because you're being a child. He's saying, I want you to always come back to me expecting. Amen. Kids do that, don't they? Doesn't it? Number seven, a spirit of transparency. This is a big one. This is the most important thing ever. A child will always say, your breath stinks. You smell like coffee breath. <laughs> Why would they tell you that? I want you to be honest with people. Now, be respectful. <laughs> because, he, this is what he says. Here's a child. <laughs> I'll never forget the Amber. She took Luke. She's two and a half. She takes my son, Luke, in the bathroom, and she says, Luke, I have to have a talk. You know what a child would say? Oh, I, I can't even go with you because I'm not married. Until we get married, I can't even go with you. See, that's, how, that's what God tells us to do, right? So transparent means you are so clear that you know what you're doing. That means you share your thoughts, you share your opinions very honestly and very respectfully. Like... Go ahead. <laughs> it's a blank video. <laughs> oh, wait. Transparent. Huh? Yeah, it's transparent. <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> Hang on. Anybody if you can put it on? I asked myself. <laughs> Did you see how it looked? Yeah. Well, how you, if you could describe it, how would you describe it? No, like what? Like a noony was. Like a noony has the 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 kind of paper. Yeah. I buy it from Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> She's putting on her nippy stick, and she said, oh, this is my phone. She's getting on her phone, and her dad, you know, he's asking her, who, who, who is this? Who told you you could do this? She said, I asked myself. <laughs> so listen, who's ready to be honest and transparent? Who has Matthew 5, 37? I'm just going to stay standing up now for a minute. let your communication be. Yay, yay, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Why doesn't anybody talk about this verse anymore? Nobody does that verse. Like, let your yay be yay, your nay be yay. Like, um, stop saying, I swear I'm going to do this. She's laughing. <laughs> Because when you swear or you say like that, you're going to do all these things. He said, that is anything is so much more becomes evil. So you have to stop making casual promises. Instead, be a person that's a, a childlike faith, that you're honest, you live a life of integrity. So others are going to start to trust you when you say you're going to do something. You either answer yes or no. Oh, you see how that comes evil? Your testimony, when you've been telling everybody about this kingdom and how much God loves them, they're like, mm, you got a bad reputation as a liar now. That's one of my pet peeves, is I love integrity, I'm just saying. We're all going to make a decision sometime and we make fault of it. That's something we got to work on, right? Like, you say you are to be deceitful, but don't be deceitful. Don't have no jealousy, because jealousy, kids are never jealous. They tell you exactly how they feel. And they tell you exactly how they think. Number eight, 
a spirit of innocence. God wants you to be innocent with him. What does that mean? You become so dependent on him that you just do what God says. You don't question it. He said, in his word, and what comes out of your mouth, because they're going to believe every single thing that I tell them. What does that mean? Be that way with God. That's what he says. Do everything what he tells us to do, and even if he tells you to do it. Now, I'm never going to forget every time I am telling you a little story. Since I was really young and I started driving my first car, I always used to see this car on the road. I loved it, Ron. I'm like, oh, that car is going to be mine one day. It was a 90, the one I, one I seen was probably one day. And guess what? He did. He did. And you know what? I was like taught growing up to believe. God. I don't know if you were. But I guess what happened? When God would be able to afford that car, did you know what God said? Believe it's yours and it's yours. I, I could go on for days and stuff I believe God for. He said, and I will do it. And you know what? I remember believing like I was five years old that one day, Ron, I was going to drive it. Well, I'm going to ask you to lift your right hand and say, Lord, Lord. Go, ahead go ahead and do what you want with me. Because I believe you like a child. Give me what you have stored up for me in heaven. Bring it down to earth. Because I believe you, Father, in Jesus' name. Now listen, my mom and her mom, right? Because she has a what? A what? A need, right? Okay. That's how child children work. They, no matter how old they are, they're still going to be children. And my daughter, she could be 100 years old and she's still going to call me when she has a need. And you know what? You don't see God ever saying, go figure it out right now. Okay? Right this minute. Take your pride down. And I would lift my hand and say, Abba Father, baby me. Because I'm your child. <laughs> baby me this week bring everything that I've been not receiving because I never believed you for it will you pick up a kid crying if they come running to you sure. me too don't worry about the world you just keep crying and think, thanking God for what he's about ready to do number 10 last one spirit of boldness this is so good to be able to live in this kingdom when you're coming you got to be bold and you got to be fearless you have to declare things that you can't even pay for let me let me say it slower you have to say things as a child will state what they want and then in the kingdom they don't calculate only adults calculate why it cannot be done. You curse yourself when you do that. I'm not saying all experience, but most experiences have been keeping you back from the life that God has for you right now tonight. Like, if you have ever experienced things and it's said to you it cannot be done, has it happened to you? Can't be done? It happened to me. But chill. <laughs> Don't tell me that I can't. What does that mean, Miss Brenda? Do you remember asking a child before? Have you ever been asked as a child, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? My son, first son, said, I want to be a baby doctor. I want to be a baby doctor. Look. Until he found out where they came from. He's like, he thought they came from your navel, and he said, I'm not doing that no more. I want to be the president. Who wanted to be the president besides Jeff? <laughs> you can't be no president and you just got to go get a job. Your parents say, be like me, be broke as a joke. And that right there kills your dreams because you follow after people. We're almost done. Does this make any sense what I'm saying? Now, the children are so bold because you know what they have? No experience. They don't know what you have. Vision, God says, shh, 
shock me. Dare me, God says. Tell me something you think that I can't do for you. Oh! So guess what? I told God, God, I'm going to build you a barn with my husband. We're going to build you a barn out back. We're going to have a spiritual hospital. We're going to have God's family room in the south, north, east, west. We're going to have it. You're telling me, you know, as I mentioned, I could die tonight. This is my last message. Because you tell me how it can't be done. That's what you be telling me. Yeah, church will never do nothing. Yeah, we're going to leave because we want to follow man. Go ahead. doesn't matter to me. But please leave me stupid. I want to be so stupid. Like, I can't wait to get out of here and just get away from everybody. Because I'm telling you right now, it's going to happen. Down you talk you out of it. Why? Because they've got so much experience. Except you come like a little child. You cannot enter the kingdom. Humble yourselves tonight. Recognize that tonight you are powerless and you are so dependent on Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. He is our God. Amen? Amen. I have a teachable spirit. I am not prideful. I am not arrogant. I am not a know-it-all. I don't have a spirit of hypocrisy. That We're going to accept the blood atonement of Christ. That's how we get into the kingdom. That means we repent, we keep God's covenant pure, and we become pure, we become holy like a child because we love to spend our life with God. He's our dad who promises to provide our needs in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. All right, well, I'm just going to say a prayer. We can stand up, and then we can get out of here. So, dear Heavenly Father, <laughs> I thank all of us, Lord. I pray, Lord, tonight that you will help us to grow in our trust.